Rishi Sunak still calling him the alleged comments. I mean, what is he even doing? Though, even sorry, though the yeah. man's admitted to it and apologised. Nobody's mean, denying Anything he, that he said, said after that was slightly spoiled by the fact that he <laughs> said alleged, they're not alleged comments, they're comments. The blokes apologise, you're condemning them. They're not, I mean, what? It's going to be a real shout past each other moment, isn't it? You're because a racist. No, you're a racist. You're a racist. No, racist. there's not a recession. You're a racist. Um, we've got some laws on the post office, but you're a racist. What about the donation? But what about the recession, the donation, the racism? Well, here's to join us. For this, again. This, this, this. It's good to be upbeat and positive about this one. Hugo Rifkin, off of Times Radio. Good afternoon, slash morning. How are you? I'm all right. I'm good. Do yeah. you normally watch PMQs? Yeah, ish. I sort of, I'm normally right in the middle of sort of writing my uh, my TV review at this point in the week. So I kind of I, I sort of flick onto it in the middle of whatever Apple murder I'm sort of yeah. deep inside. And Ren realised that whatever you were watching was much better than you thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> often, <laughs> oftentimes, yes, yes. I'm interested to see how they're going to sort of mishmash up between the sort of the the racism donation scandal and the recession. Maybe if they got a lot more racists, they could take ten million pounds from each of them and pay pay off the recession. That's a good idea. Yeah, the art. Uh, yeah, could bring the two together. Mm. Yeah, don't see anyone floating that in the chamber, but you never know. Does it? Do you count it? Does it get counted in the economy again if the ten million pounds just keeps moving around? That's interesting. I don't know enough about how economics well, it's, works. But it's also, you know, ten million quid's a lot of money. You know, he's yeah. going to be thinking he's going to be getting paid if he if he does get it back. It's it's it's, it's quite a return for being a racist. Exactly. Isn't it? Put, yeah. It, yeah. Is it? Is somebody messaged in that? It's, it's more of a punishment to not have your ten million pounds back. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that 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 doesn't sound like it should be a profound point, does it? But, um, I mean, the laundering be... cash you normally whitewash the money, don't you? That's what we're doing here. Mm. Maybe they should give the money to someone else. Yeah, if they keep giving the money to somebody else and getting them to spend it, maybe give by giving it back to the Tory party. Yeah, yeah, it could just keep going round. Is there I... capital gains tax on racism as well? That's the other question. Otherwise, they'll all just be racist to get the money back, won't they? Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, if you've given money it. to the Tories, then you then you come out and say something racist, you get your money back. Yeah. After you've got your seat in the Lords. Slam dunk, yeah. Not that he's got a seat in the Lords. And obviously there's no suggestion that anyone has got a seat in the Lords as a result of giving money to any political party. Or for being racist. Or for being racist. Those... <laughs> It's always okay. good to hear the Labour Party going after donations, though. I mean, anyone who's been to the Trade Unions Congress knows there's quite a few anti deluvian old chaps there who uh, have some quite uh, old-fashioned views, shall we say, as well. I did make this point um, earlier in the show, but the uh, the fact that what has happened with the Tory party and their 24-hour slow car crash response to their racist is almost exactly what happened with the Labour Party and their slow car crash uh, response to a racist Yeah, and as a sort Rochdale. of political observer, rather than a sort of uh, moral outragey, um, the far more significant thing here is the absolute inept catastrophe that has been the Conservative response to what is a pretty straightforward mm, but, um, but what... uh, standard bit of political gaff-making. What should they have done, though? I mean, because because the moment you say he's... Look, he's obviously... It's obviously racist. The moment you say it's racist, the obvious question is give the money back. They don't want to give the money back. They well, want they're to not going to give, they're not gonna the, give the money back. back. Well, but, what you but say, you we're get... not going to give it back because that would, would reward racism. Right, yeah. But uh, In fact, we've robbed this racist of 10 million yeah. quid. Yeah, I don't really see that playing, though. Because, I mean, it means... It, when, come, come the election. No, but you every, can every time, every time there's a poster that goes up, They'll be like, did the racists pay for that one? But you, you can know, every, stop every it time. being the top story on the BBC just... if you condemn it utterly and say this bloke is um, uh, a racist and perhaps even say, now that you've got 10 million of his pounds, that you mm. don't want to take any more from him. And actually, the, But the... no political party would hand back 10 million quid. They just wouldn't. But also, the, 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 the political impact on your own troops of mm -hmm. sending them out, which is exactly what Keir Starmer did with the, the guy in Rochdale, for two media rounds, the front benches yep. went out and said, no, it's all fine. And then they say, oh, actually, no, we are going to suspend And them. this is what happened with Boris Johnson. The reason yes. Boris Johnson is not the Prime Minister anymore is not specifically because of all the things that he did or all the things the people working for him did. It was because they kept lying about it, denying it, being dragged, kicking and screaming to say what was blindingly obvious to any normal punter in the street. Um, Having spent, sent everybody out there to argue the exact opposite um, for days and days, and the people around Rishi Sunak thought this was rank incompetence. They sat there phoning up people like me and saying, this bloke couldn't run a what's it in a brewery, and now they're doing exactly the same yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And it, this is what has MPs climbing the walls at what they think is, you know, distraction, incompetence, um, arrogance, um, and they're... Belief 
amongst the Sunak people, just as there was a belief amongst the Jeremy Corbyn... Jeremy Corbyn can't possibly be racist. He spent all his career mm. fighting racism. So when it turned out he was a massive anti-Semite, um, that was something they couldn't deal with. And now with this, oh, Rishi Sunak's not white. We're not racist. Um, everything's OK. Um, it, 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 if it, you know, quacks like a duck and walks like a mm. duck and swims like a duck, it's a duck. You have to say it's a duck publicly and you have to deal with it. And and you're gonna you know, have Hugo to say, may be right. It may not say, go away. You're going to have to say it's a duck eventually, so don't spend 24 hours saying it's not yeah, a duck. Say it's yeah. a duck immediately. Although, I mean, I think, you know, the, the, the central original problem here is it's not how they handled it. It's that they took 10 million quid from a racist. Well, they probably you didn't know. know he was a racist when, he when well, they he took the seem, term. Well, he doesn't quit. seem to have been that shy about it. You know, I mean, it's, it's like in, in all the sort of meetings they had with him since 2019, I think did he if, never say anything a bit off? I mean, in their defence, I would defend yeah. the Labour Party in the same way. If you spent your whole life going through the social media feed of literally everybody who's ever given you money, I think you would find that well, um, but, I mean, you wouldn't a, have a great many donors but, left. But have a, have a threshold for doing that at £9 million. <laughs> you know, you'd still be better off. <laughs> Right, here we go then. Uh, let's find out. Can Keir Starmer capitalise on all of the Prime Minister's woes? How long will it take before Rishi Sunak mentions that the economy's been growing? Let's go live to the House of Commons. Question number one from Keir Starmer. The Prime Minister proud to be bankrolled by someone using racist and misogynist language when he says the member for Hackney North and Stoke Newington makes you want to hate all black women? Minister, Mr Speaker... The alleged comments were wrong, they were racist, and he has now, as I said, the comments were wrong, they were racist. He has rightly apologised for them, and that remorse, and that remorse should be accepted, Mr Speaker. There is no place for racism in Britain, and the government that I lead is living proof of that. Yeah. Rishi Sunak still calling them the alleged comments. I mean, what is he even doing? Though, even sorry, though the yeah. man's admitted to it and apologised. What a, Nobody's mean, denying Anything he, he said, said after that was slightly spoiled by the fact that he <laughs> said alleged... They're not alleged comments, they're comments. The blokes apologise, you're condemning them. They're not... I mean, what? The alleged <laughs> comments are allegedly racist. It's a, oh, it's a weird he, he also put an extra syllable into racism. We had racism, oh. which I thought was exciting. Was is that, is that, like, really bad? Really bad. I think that's when you don't like racist. He's accusing he's accusing the Labour Party of being racist. I think. <laughs> I think that's what's happening. But he did play the I'm living proof card. Yeah. And the next card he plays will be that we've had, uh, you know, two women prime ministers. We've had, um, you know, uh, we haven't had a, a non. Uh, we haven't had a white Home Secretary for quite some time now. Um, yeah. You know, um, the Tories have got a lot of sort of good cards to play in the. We look and sound like the country, whereas you lot talk a good game but don't do anything about it. Something I mean, slightly odd about the way that this is being fought is like, yes, obviously racism bad, but he did also say she should be shot. I mean, yeah. this you is know, this is what I think might be a bigger deal. Slightly word odd about this whole yeah. thing. To me, that is a much bigger deal in a world where you've had two MPs killed in the last, you know, appreciable recent uh, couple of years. Um, and no one seems to be focusing on yeah, that yeah, at all. Yeah. Well, if he'd said it, if he'd said it yesterday, uh, and had been recorded saying it yesterday, he would presumably have a knock on the door from the police today, mm. because I mean, you know, <laughs> that, that, and it is being yeah. investigated by the police. Is it right? Have, but it is interesting, isn't it? At least these in these days, and I will say this very carefully because I'm sure lots of people will be outraged. But why is racism regarded as worse than rape or genocide or shooting someone? Yeah. It is now the ultimate sin, uh, for good or ill. Um, it does look like Diane Abbott is in the Commons and has got a, uh, a piece of paper in front of her, in her hand. So it mm. looks like she might be trying to get calls. So we'll keep and an eye I on that. I imagine that the Speaker will... Uh, will will oblige. Will oblige. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's uh, go back to the House of Commons. It's Matt Trolley with Tim Shipman and Hugo Rifkin. Let's go back to question number two from Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, the man bankrolling the Prime Minister also said that the member for Hackney North should be shot... How low would he have to sink? What racist, woman-hating threat of violence would he have to make before the Prime Minister plucked up the courage to hand back the £10 million that he's taken from him? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, as I said, the gentleman apologised genuinely for his comments and that remorse should be accepted. But he talks about language. He, he might want to reflect on the double standards of his deputy leader, of his deputy leader calling her opponent scum, Mr. Speaker. His shadow, his shadow, his shadow foreign secretary, the shadow foreign secretary comparing conservatives to Nazis, Mr. Speaker. And 
the man that he wanted to make Chancellor the man that he wanted to make Chancellor talking about lynching a female minister. His silence on that speaks volumes. Mm. Uh, there's, uh, somebody actually messaged in saying, I suspect we're going to get uh, I'll take no lectures. We didn't quite, but it was it was basically uh, the theme of it. Quite a st no, strong questions from Keir Starmer, which, which actually worded in a way that make it almost impossible for Rishi Sunak to say anything. Uh, when, uh, what, uh, how low would this woman-hating threat of violence uh, does he need to sink before the Prime Minister uh, would d return the money? Like, Rishi Sunak basically doesn't have an answer to that. Well, he doesn't, because yeah. they're not going to return the money. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he, I think he's sort of, of his sort of roll call there from, you know, uh, from, uh, what, what was it, Rayner, Lammy, and I think it must be John McDonald. John McDonald, yeah, the yeah. lynching. I think I'd probably rather Angela Rayner called me scum than said I should be shot. That yeah. that does seem preferable. I think only when we get only we, when we get into lynching. I think lynching and being territory. shot are, are sort of comparable, aren't they? Relatively similar, yeah. And he was widely condemned at the time. That was a comment yeah. made about Esther McVeigh, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. Um, and quite a lot of similar comments were made about um, some of the Jewish uh, female Labour MPs as well, um, Luciana Berger, and I think. Um, you talk to people like Margaret Hodge, they were getting that kind of stuff quite a lot. I mean, admittedly, not from people who, like, who'd given the Labour Party £10 million. That would have been iffy. Uh, it would, yes. <laughs> it's also not... As I say, I don't think the trade unions have a particularly clean slate on the, have, having the right views about women or about race. Um, anyone who's been to the TUC Congress knows that. I don't think Keir Starmer ever said anything about uh, John McDonnell and the lynching comments, even though he sat around the uh, the shadow cabinet. No, table and this goes back to the whole business of what did Starmer do on anti-Semitism. Anti yeah. He which... didn't say very much on very much during that um, during most of that period. Oh, but let's go back then to uh, is Keir Starmer going to do all six questions on this, uh, or might he broaden it out? Uh, and will we hear from uh, Diane Abbott also in the House of Commons? Lee Anderson is sitting next to George Galloway. I know it's a proper popcorn one. This, isn't oh, it? there we are. So, and are they bobbing? Are they bobbing? Or, like, or, or are they like Statman and Walls off, just passing comment? Like the three of us. Uh, Matt Jolly, Tim Shipman, Hugo Rifkin on Times Radio. Let's go back to the House of Commons. Question number three. Mr. Speaker, the difference is he's scared of his party. I've changed my party. <laughs> and Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. I want to hear both the Prime Minister and lead the opposition. Here's one. Two weeks ago, the Prime Minister invited himself into everyone's living room at six o'clock on a Friday evening. No one asked him to give that speech. He chose to do it. He chose to anoint himself as the great healer and pose as some kind of unifier. But when the man bankrolling his election says the member for Hackney North should be shot, he suddenly finds himself tongue-tied, shrinking in sophistry, hoping he can deflect for long enough that we'll all go away. What does the Prime Minister think it was about the hundreds of millions of pounds of NHS contracts given to Frank Hester by his government that first attracted him to giving £10 million to the Tory party in the first place? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm absolutely not going to take any lectures from somebody... From somebody, and somebody who chose to represent an anti-Semitic terrorist group, Hizbut Tahrir, who chose to serve a leader who let anti-Semitism run rife in this Labour Party. Those are his actions, those are his values, and that's how he should be judged. Oh, well, we had them all there. Uh, so uh, Andy got in touch earlier and suggested uh, as a question to be used at PMQs, could you tell us what first attracted you to the racist multi-millionaire Tory benefactor... For, uh, uh, Frank Hester. So thank you for that, Andy. Uh, clearly, uh, Keir Starmer is listening. We also had a... Uh, I'm not going to take any lectures, uh, so that's another one uh, ticked off. Uh, William uh, suggested that. Um, Keir Starmer get, enjoying leaning into, you know, you're scared of your party, I've changed mine. Well, that's which is the exact. I mean, is the exact attack that Rishi Sunak wants to put on him that he's scared of his party. That I mean, that's the sort of a lot of the subtext, or a lot of the extremism stuff is that Labour has a much greater problem with demonstrations and so on. The, the, the Tories do. So that's interesting. Turning it round. Um, yeah, I also thought the the sort of the. I mean, sorry, worst version of the Mrs. Merton joke ever yes. delivered there. I think there's not many ways you could have done that worse. Your listeners did it far better. But that sort of the segue into contracts is interesting into NHS contracts, the fact that that's going to make Labour the, the territory on which they now 
keep pushing this. Yeah, and that's been quite productive terrain since the Mm. pandemic for them. That's sort of one of those things that cut through in the focus groups. People don't like the the whiff of that sort of... uh, 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 contracts for the boys uh, approach. Um, I mean, interestingly, of course, Starmer, you know, probably three months ago would have probably found this slightly easier than he's doing today because um, he didn't have um, everything that's happened in Rochdale since um, kind of undermining a little bit um, his claims to have changed the party. Um, but this is now a sort of punchy exchange with um, a quite a lot of blood and uh, heat and not very much light. Um, I can bring you some breaking news on the sartorial front. Peter Manos has been in touch saying he thinks that uh, Rishi Sunak has switched to a marginally wider tie. Uh, a couple of... <laughs> well, Rishi Sunak's ties used to be like the sort of ties... That when I was at school, you had a fat side and a thin side. You mm. used to deliberately dress yeah, you, with the thin side hanging do your down. tie backwards, Looking yeah. like a sort of mod or whatever. Yeah. Um, and Sunak's always had that very curious sense. So, yeah, uh, when sense. we discussed uh, political fashions last week, it began with uh, Peter saying that he thought that Rishi Sunak's thin ties and skinny suits diminished him, and then he went on to say that Keir Starmer should lose weight. Uh, but no, uh, I think it is the case that Rishi Sunak's wearing a slightly fatter tie. If it was a normal width tie, it would look like a bib. He's not a very broad man. <laughs> 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 it would look like one of those dresses. Who, who is it was wearing? I think Sydney Sweeney. No, it was Sydney Sweeney. It's Someone's still... wearing at the Oscars, you know, it's just a panel in front. It's yeah. still yeah. pretty thin, though, isn't it? 